Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play. I told you I'd be recording these more frequently because I want to blitz some of these videos as we get closer to Stormblood, and so here we are. So in this video, we're going to be tackling, or we're going to start tackling, the patch 3.1 dungeons. Now, I double-checked before I started the recording, but I have one of them already. I unlocked it at some point. There it is. Saint Moseon's Arboretum. The other one I need to unlock is Pharaoh Serious Hard Mode, which actually kind of like Pharaoh Serious Hard Mode, so I'm looking forward to doing that one. So Saint Moseon's Arboretum is going to be one of the other dungeons you unlock. It's 40 tombstones of lore, 10 tombstones of scripture. On top of that, I will get a first-time bonus, and it has an average item level of 170. What was my average item level anyway? 190, well, I should repair before we go in. 197 because of the earrings, which are actually completely broken and may have been completely broken throughout the entirety of the last video without me knowing. <laughs> so that's always pleasant. Uh, yeah, I'll probably pick up earrings next then. I picked up a ring last time, didn't I? Yeah, I really did. Okay. So it is really just that that's like tanking my item level below 200 tanking. That's like three item levels. Uh, okay, that gives us a, a good a good place to aim for. So we're going to do St. Moseon's Arboretum, which also I think is one of the better dungeons that they released throughout the patch, uh, th throughout all the patch cycles for Heavensward, really. Patch 3.1, while we're queuing into this, honestly was kind of a dark time for Final Fantasy XIV. It was probably the single most concerning major patch since the game's relaunch at 2.0. Now, let's be clear. Patch 2.0 relaunched, you know, everything was great. You know, the story felt classic Final Fantasy. It was a revived game from, you know, one of the worst MMO mistakes of all time. Uh, but it still ran into issues of, you know, content and what it was doing. Even before we had a set precedent, Twintanya was a disaster. And then going into 2.1, things looked to have gotten a little bit better. You know, Warrior was fixed up. We had the Extreme Primals. We had Ultima Hard Mode. We had uh, a bunch of dungeons to do. So even though the, the content didn't change too much, it was a pretty high quality patch. 3.0 came out, had a similar problem with its raid group, with its raid in Gordius, which pretty much destroyed the raiding community at the time. Um, on top of that, it was a one month and longer patch cycle because they took a break after developing for the expansion. And then 3.1 came out and we only had two Expert Dungeons, that's been a new trend because they wanted to work on other forms of content. St. Moseon's Arboretum and Pharaoh Series Hard Mode were both okay. But that was the patch when the original version of the Diadem released, which was initially received okay, but within maybe a couple of days of people running it consistently, very quickly began to tank in terms of, uh, in terms of interest that people had in it. Uh, there were tons of issues with queuing up in terms of, you know, gatherers versus people who are in combat jobs. Uh, you know, just the, the mundane task of literally sitting on one island and grouping up mobs for two hours to try and maybe get a piece of loot that was somewhat useful and most of the time really not. Uh, there was nothing interesting to do in the zone itself whenever like a boss mob would spawn. People would just all fly to it and there was special ways people forced those things to spawn. And the other major piece of content was Lords of Verminion, which was an RTS style game that still exists and you can play it. But it was so much work they put into it that... It just didn't belong. Like, I still think they actually did a somewhat okay job with Lords of Verminion. It's just they tried sticking an RTS and an action RPG, like Diablo-style content, into an MMO that just doesn't have roots in those kind of things. People wanted different, but different didn't work in those patches. So, St. Mosean's Arboretum is a little positive point from that patch, but that was a dark time. That was a real big time when a lot of people thought 14 was in big, big trouble. Luckily, it bounced back with things like Palace of the Dead, like Aquapolis. The next raid tier was infinitely more fun, though still very frustrating for your average raider and not your hardcore raider. The quality of the story was, uh, you know, better overall throughout all the 3.x stories. Even the, even the dungeons themselves were okay, although, honestly, until patch 3.5, like 3.2, 3.4 dungeons were pretty underwhelming in a lot of ways. So there's a lot to say about that time, and so going into the 3.1 dungeons and with 4.0 and then 4.1 coming soon after, you know, I begin to think, will they finally have a decent launch for the expansion, as opposed to it, you know, kind of starting off not great and then sort of getting a lot of good treatments later on. It's definitely something that uh, is something that's worth questioning. But anyway, I rambled on for the first three minutes just to give you guys my thoughts and take you a little bit down memory lane. I'm going to wait for this to pop, and then when it does, I'll be back. All right, so let me explain something real quick since we're doing Since you cut away, last time, last time you saw me, I said, hey, guys, when I get the cue, I'll, uh, I'll cut back to the video. 
So let me tell you what actually happened, and I'm just jumping right into this because I've, I've got the dungeon right here. So I, I got the queue, it took about 15 minutes, and I had pressed stop to record because I was like, I don't want just 15 minutes of extra footage on my computer, so I'll press stop record, and I'll press start record when I start the dungeon again. Guess what I didn't do when I got into the dungeon? That's right, I forgot to press start record. And you know what? And of course, then now this is already happening. And you know what? It was probably the best possible dungeon to showcase St. Mosion's Arboretum. We had a tank that used a very unique and very efficient strat on one of the large pulls that you can do in there that's very specific to St. Mosion's Arboretum. And it was just an overall good run. We had some slow pulls, we had some large pulls. And I don't think in any way this pull can possibly replicate the effect of this. In fact, it looks like it's actually going to be a pretty slow run overall. It looks like we're going to have a new tank, which is actually perfectly okay with me because I will get to showcase some of these, uh, some of those mechanics then pro uh, possibly. But we'll see because he's sprinting off immediately. So we'll see what actually ends up happening. So this is, it's tomorrow, by the way. It's literally tomorrow for me now. It's like a full, almost 24 hours after the last recording. Yeah, so he's going to be doing these super normally. I don't know why he sprinted. <laughs> I don't know why he sprinted there. But this is actually already going very similarly to the last one. At least he used Shadow Skin, you know. He didn't wait till he hit the mobs on him, but he, is, he also doesn't have Dark Side up. I also don't know if he's used Blood Price yet. Uh, Okay, this is, this is going to be one of those dungeons, huh? Alright, well, let's just make it work, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just... Make it work. It, I, it, also, I have aggro. So, uh, I might have to take it a little bit easy right here. Okay, so St. Mosion's Arboretum. This is one of the 3.1 dungeons, like I said earlier in the video, which was yesterday for me at this point, so my apologies. And I was so busy focusing on the fact that he didn't have Dark Side up that that was my first size of the dungeon. So, that's going to be one of those. He, yeah, this is... He's not... He doesn't... He doesn't. Alright, it's going to be... It's going to be a long dungeon, guys. It's going to be a long dungeon. I'm going to say this right now. It's Dark Knight, guys. Keeping Dark Side up 100% of the time. Or close to it. Like, maybe turn it off between poles or something like that. Usually a good idea. Usually the preferred method when it comes to Dark Knight. But, at least he's staying in his lane. He's not doing that and trying to pull the entire, uh, the entire dungeon. So, I'll take that over someone who's overly ambitious. If that makes sense. I'd rather he be playing to his own speed than trying to play at a speed that doesn't suit him. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this ends up going. Anyway, so the first few pulls are pretty simple. The most common thing to do, he's also only using Shadow Skin, I think, is his only cooldown. That's what I don't notice. I'm going to end up focusing on this the entirety, because he also hasn't used Blood Price yet. Blood Price is a really good ability for Dark Knight. The, no, actually, you know, good news. He Maybe he's not doing it on purpose, so... I can AoE forever and never have to worry about anything. Mmm. That's that's that next level metagame right there. That's that next level metagame right there. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so as you can see, the ads here, not anything too threatening. It's most common for people to actually pull all the way up to just before this Malboro. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that we have a somewhat slower speed so you can see the pulls individually. It's actually quite a heavy hitting dungeon. Uh, there's a lot of very large pulls that people do that are sometimes overly ambitious. But for the most part, as long as you're keeping up on the healing, you should be okay. Oh, there you go. Use the other one. Use the, is that Shadow Wall? Yeah, it's Shadow Wall. We got a Shadow Wall, boys. And he's in grit. I can at least accept that. And we're almost at the first boss. Those first few pulls individually, none of them are threatening. Malboros act exactly the same. The other adds, there's a lot of them, but then none of them hit particularly hard. So there shouldn't be anything too threatening here. So he's going to get a few AoEs out, and so am I. Hey guys, I think I've officially used the size more times in this video than I did in the entirety of the Fractal Continuum video. <laughs> That's a grand total of two. Actually, I think I used it three times? Anyone want to go back and count? I really forgot to use the size a lot there. Technically, I could have been using, uh, what's it called, um, Palm here, but uh, that's Presence of Mind for those of you who may also have played World of Warcraft. Not the same Palm. Not the same Palm. But, uh, you know, I'll use it on the boss. I'm just going to remember it now. I'll just use it on the boss. 
Which, by the way, we're up to the first boss. Very simple ads, as you can see. This, the, it's usually first pull all the way up to that end point where you saw us kill the the three mobs before the Malboro spawn. And then you take that second Malboro and you pull it to those Corpacurs. That's usually the normal pull. But the first boss here is Rose Garden. Very, very simple boss. Very, very simple boss. So, it does mostly standard Malboro things. He doesn't want to turn. It does a cleave. It does... Oh, now he's turning it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting strategy. Interesting. More interesting that the, the monk did not move. Now, the main mechanic that it does, it goes to the middle and it summons that poison puddle in the middle of the room. So, you can't walk through the middle of the room. It also then summons a bunch of adds, and they all do a bad breath. Now, all the adds bad breath will actually just keep going. Like, so you don't want to walk in front of it. However, as you can see, the boss himself is actually rotating. And as you can also see, the tank just did not move at all. Not even an attempt at moving, if I may say, if I, if I may so boldly state. There was a not even an attempt. <laughs> Now, after that first set, you're going to get these Rose Hip spawns. These you're going to want to kill. If you do not kill them, they will explode, and it does quite a bit of damage. I think I might be the only one actually attempting to kill them. I don't think anybody else has made an attempt to actually kill the Rose Hips. There's still, I think, one alive. There we go. I think we're good now. He also does room-wide AoE. Again, nothing too threatening. And now he's going to go back to the middle of the room. He's going to summon the adds again, and he's going to do the breath again. The only difference is now he's going to summon rose hips as well. So while he's rotating, you got to kill the rose hips. It's not bad. Obviously, there's going to be those rose hips that are kind of in, like, super inconvenient spots, like that rose hip where that guy got completely demolished. That being said, there's really no damage here. If there's ever a point for you to kind of practice stance dancing, even if it's just something very minor... This is not a bad spot to start trying to practice it. Jesus Christ. I think, by the way, he rotates based on damage dealt to him. And he stops rotating when you dealt enough damage. So the fact that it, he rotated almost halfway across the room just means damage on him was overall very, very low. And, uh, yeah. That's it. That's the boss. And then some of that stuff just, you know, alternates again and again. That was... This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, the gear in this dungeon, by the way, uh, item level 185. So at this point, I only have one piece that I could realistic... I'm honestly, I just... Sorry, I looked over and just made sure it said that I started the recording. <laughs> I'm not messing around with this one this time. Uh, so 185 gear, I don't really need it. But I have one piece. If I get the uh, accessory, that would be a good piece for me to get. So, I just want to point something out real quick. I don't know if it's been nerfed when I'm saying this. It, it could be that this has been nerfed at some point. But this turtle is actually ridiculously strong, if I recall. Like, this AoE in particular, if I recall, if it does hit you, actually does a pretty intense amount of damage. I don't know. It might have changed. It's been a long time since I've paid attention to what happens in St. Mosion's Arboretum. But uh, it could also have not changed, and it could also be one of those AoEs that just hits you way harder than all the other AoEs in the dungeon. Alright. Now, you're probably wondering right now why I haven't recommended he do stuff. You know what? There are situations where I think, you know, I can win it. I can win the conversation. I'm feeling like this is not a conversation that if I start it, it ends well. So, I'm just going to put on my carry pants. And this is something I've recommended throughout the series. Yes, there are times where I feel like it's applicable for you to step in and, and tell someone, hey, you know, this would be more optimal, or, you know, so other people might give you a really hard time. I don't want to see that happen to you. Uh, I'd rather, you know, tell you that this is kind of how most people expect it to be done, and that that is, a, you know, a more optimal way of doing it. I feel like this isn't one of those situations. I feel like what I'm seeing here is not one of those cases where it'll like it'll go through, you know. The problem is if somebody if nobody tells you that you're making a mistake, then you know, you'll keep thinking what you're doing is okay. So there's really no right there's really no best way to handle this situation. I'm just going to put on my care pants and let somebody else be in charge of eventually helping this guy to get through his bearings on Dark Knight. It is also a returning player status, so 
I'm wondering if he played Dark Knight. So I'm wondering why he sprinted there. That's my biggest, like, why is he sprinting there? And then... It might be, it could be a bot. Do you think it's a bot? You think it's a bot? Could it be a bot? I don't know, he... So the way that he handled the first boss, he once he picked a spot after he moved the first time, he did not move the entire remainder of that instance. I'm almost curious, if I put him in a situation, and he just keeps sprinting, I think this might be a bot. <laughs> because it seems like when he runs up to an enemy, I don't know though, because when he runs up to one enemy, he very clearly acts differently to the way he runs up to multiple enemies. Like, he, he... It seems like there's some degree of automation here. You know? But I don't... I don't know. It just... It could just be that it's someone who has no idea what they're doing. It's very, very plausible. It's just, I'm fascinated, but I don't even want to talk about the dungeon. Okay. So this next part of the dungeon, I absolutely will not get to show you the way I want to show you. But this is actually a part of the dungeon that's incredibly important that I talk about. So right now we're going into the beehive part of the dungeon. What some groups will do is they'll kill that honeycomb and those first two soldier hawks. Then they'll run all of the monsters from the beginning here all the way to the end to a second honeycomb. When you start attacking honeycombs inside the beehive, ads will spawn. On the second one, in fact, there's hornets that spawn that I'll point out that, yes, do final sting. So, what people will do is they'll pull them all, and then they'll just, you know, pop all the cooldowns and say, Zerg down the honeycomb. Because if you kill the honeycomb, you get to an interactable, or even just, a, like, a slide you walk up to. And when you get, when you walk up to that slide, um, and you go through it, the ads can't follow you. So you could basically ignore killing all the monsters, if that makes any sense. However, we are not doing it that way, so it's hard to really talk about. So you'll pull that first mob we killed, you'll pull this garden bee cloud that we're fighting right now, and you'll pull them both to that honeycomb right there. And you'll see when we, when we fight that honeycomb, there's going to be some ads that spawn. And, and the tank will just gather these ads and then not touch anything and just kill the honeycomb. What our tank did, so the reason why I say the last dungeon was an exemplary, well, example of uh of how people can do this dungeon the paladin not only i still didn't use by the way palm in the, the on the first boss like i said i was going to i have mobs on me by the way i'm scared so what people do is they'll kill the honeycomb and then they'll just run through i don't think that's what they want to do it's like we did it but that's not actually what people are doing. So you see all these ads? You'll just straight up ignore these and go to the boss room. Is what the most common strategy is. That's not what's happening right now. So I'm just going to help kill these ads. Now keep in mind those Orn Hornets. Oh, they do that. They do that. Whew. See this See this episode? I remembered where the, the benediction was. <laughs> I remembered where the benediction was. So we ended up doing it correctly and then killing all the ads afterwards anyway. Which is very unusual, but you still kind of got to see what the idea was behind it. Why you kill the honeycomb, you slide down this slide, and you go to the boss room, and then you don't have to kill any of the ads. And now I don't have... And now I don't have... Uh, I don't have palm because I used it in that last scenario. Now, this second boss, the Queen Hawk, will probably actually get to see a fair amount of the mechanics. I hope. I'm really confused by the actions I'm seeing right now. I'm very, very confused. I'm even more confused now. So what she'll do is she'll summon these, you know, Night Hawks around the outside. Now, in Phase 1, she summons four of them, and they'll shoot these spindles at us. That's mechanic number one. She's also doing these Pheromone Leaks, which do AoE damage. Uh, again, not too big of a deal. Now, the thing that she'll do is an ability called a sail, I think? Yeah. So when she does a sail, she's going to pick a target. And the ads, you can see the it's the monk in this case. Sorry, it's the dragoon. And they'll all just start spamming line AoEs in their direction. Now it picked me, so now they're going to start doing that in my direction. And then you just kind of just slightly dodge them all. And then the boss herself does... 
these AoEs that just leave poison puddles behind. And when she gets to about 50%, she'll do a Veil. And she's going to summon all four of these Nighthawks to the middle of the room, make her invincible, and start spamming AoEs. Your goal is to just kill these Nighthawks as quickly as possible. See what I mean? Like, I have to assume that there's something going on here. <laughs> like, unleash on the one target, you know... Ignoring the ads, he went up to them eventually, but you know, I have to assume something's going on. So now in phase two, there's eight of the ads. The first attack she'll use is ally. What ally does is they go into huddles of four and then shoot an AoE clear through the middle of the room, line AoE, and as you can see, it doesn't do a lot of damage. They ate both of the AoEs and it didn't even do a lot. So not all that bad. What is the Dragoon doing? Ah, you can go back in, dude. Look at your health. You fine, man. You fine. Then they'll start doing this uh, sharp spindle thing, except now there's twice as many of them. So the damage is a little bit higher. She's going to do a sail again. After this a sail, she'll actually do another one of those, uh, that other type of AoE. And also there's now eight AoEs to be dodging here. They also don't do a lot of damage, as you can see. And then she'll do, I think she does another, another ally? I think she'll die, yeah, she'll die before she gets to do it. Uh, if your DPS is really low, yeah, she started casting it there. She'll do ally again, she'll just keep repeating them back and forth until it ends. Pretty simple boss. Used to be a lot more fun back at the appropriate item level. Uh, even item level synced, the, the difficulty of it definitely doesn't come through. It used to be a lot more fun. Now it's very simple. You'll usually even kill before you get the, the, the assail off in the second phase. A lot of times you kill before you get the first assail in the first phase. All right, and now we're on to the final stretch. Now, if you're doing big pulls, the honeycomb is a special example. That's one of the hardest big pulls to do if people aren't all on the same page. These big pulls, which I can already tell you won't happen, actually just straight up hit really hard. There's no special mechanics. There's no nothing you know crazy unique about this point. There's just a lot of monsters. So normally the first pull is this Beloko plus the Tangled Narbrules, those three, and that's the largest that the first pull can be. After you kill the Narbrules... The next path opens up, and an ad immediately spawns and aggroes you. And then as you run through the next area, ads will start spawning as you get to certain breakpoints. But even then, um, it's not all too bad. It's really the bears and their AoEs that can get a little bit out of hand. But when I say out of hand, it's very subjective. And they don't really get out of hand, you know what I mean? It's just that they can if you're basically not doing anything at all. Alright, so we're going to kill these Narbrules, and then that little path over there on the right is going to open up. I could probably use my palm on the next pull. I'll still have it for the boss. I just got to get some deeps out. Man, the wait for that... Oh, by the way, I'd like to point out... No, I was talking about how I waited like 15 minutes for the dungeon. You know, and then I ended up having the whole situation I explained at the beginning. I'd like to point out... That this St. Mosion's Arboretum Q that I'm doing right now was instant. So, yeah. So this is the ad that comes after you as soon as you kill those Narbrils. It's a grisly host. These are the really, these are really the enemy that will cause the most issues because if, if they aren't paying attention, they get hit by that Conal AoE. Um, and you have like two or three of them on you, then it gets really bad really fast. I'm really glad to have the stun skin. Not the shadow skin in this case, but the stun skin. The Beloko also hits pretty hard, but the... Uh, oh, by the way, these aren't Narbrules. I, you know, I actually call them this all the time. They're Narbroys. Or Narbruis. I don't know. Something like that. They're a weird name. <laughs> That's all I can really tell you. Now, if you actually take a few steps forward, you see those two kind of domes that are made of the branches? Those uh, two grizzly hosts will actually come out. It's very often. Uh, why is Grit off? So you're not using dark side, so why is grit off? Okay, I'm gonna type okay, he turned it back on. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was a misclick. Of some kind. <laughs> I'm gonna assume it was a misclick of some kind. He also lost aggro and was taking a ton of damage there. I was actually about to type, your grit and dark side fell off. I, you know what, I, I, you know, I just realized I've had aggro this whole time. <laughs> oh, there's the, the heal and cleric stance. I love healing and cleric stance. And there you go, the two grizzly hosts. 
Loot? Eh, I don't need a neck piece. I need earrings if I'm correct, right? Yeah, I need earrings. Feels bad, man. I'm gonna go over here. Oh, wait, I think that might be the first time he's used Salted Earth this entire time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I hope you continue to improve on your Dark Knight. Sometimes, you just need to play a little bit more, man. And it'll all come back. I really have been, like, not even pressing certain buttons just because I've been staring at the, the, light, the, the light party bar this entire time. At least uh, you get to see all the mobs in the dungeon without a, you know, speed pull, right? Nobody does that. Ugh. And by the way, we're one pull away from the, from the last boss. Some groups will take it all the way to the end right here. And they'll, uh, and then they'll fight all the mobs at once. But it's also more normal to just grab those grizzly hosts. The more, more groups I see grab the grizzly hosts. And then they stop and then they take care of these three on their own. Because the damage... Especially when item level synced gets a little bit overbearing for a lot of the duty finder, so... That's usually the limit with which you'll see people perform. Did you just move out of my bubble? No! Get back in it! I don't care if you gotta reposition the boss, the, the enemies, not even bosses. Get back in my goddamn bubble! <laughs> I am not amused. Well, at least I got a first-time bonus, right? I got the first-time bonus from my own dungeon, and now I get it again. Whee! Hey, you know what? Despite the issues with this, you know, it's, it's been a smooth dungeon at the very least. I can definitely say for certain that it's been a smooth dungeon. Alright, and now we're on to the final boss, Belladonna. Belladonna actually used to be a pretty intense dungeon boss as well. Not so much anymore. Uh, quite a few mechanics, actually. But still a pretty simple fight overall. In fact, this is actually a fight where they showed us it in the trailer for patch 3.1, and there were some extra mechanics in there that aren't present here in the actual normal fight. But there are still a lot of mechanics, and the longer the fight goes, the more mechanics you'll get. Why is your grid off? What? Huh? Grit and dark side, please. I, it's a bot. It's got to be a bot. Well, there's the grit. <laughs> so the first mechanic you saw there is one where you just have to stand close to the boss. Oh, he put dark... Wait. If I... Okay, apparently if I had asked for dark side all that time ago, I would have put it on. So the first mechanic there, you saw you just have to get close to him. Now, this is the main mechanic. These little ads right here, you cannot kill them. And if you stand in the AoE, if you stand in the AoE circle that they... If you stand in the... Oh my god, I just noticed this guy is aggro. Alright. No, don't worry, I got you. We can three-man this. I've done it before. Just, just stop moving around. Just stop moving around. So, if you stand next to those those saplings, they give you a magic vulnerability debuff. You don't want to get that magic vulnerability debuff, because it means that that attack, Soul Vacuum, does a ton more damage. Does a ton more damage. Does a ton more damage. So, five stacks does that much to a tank, by the way, I'd like to point out. His grid is also off again! This is, uh, this is becoming very interesting. It was, I remember what, and it was going fine. What? And now, you know what it was? He turned Grit off, and he had no MP because of Dark Side. Okay, so the next mechanic is to get close to him, is to get close to him. Yeah, so this is the attack. You just got to stand on the inside bubble, and you're good, right? All right, I might just honestly stop healing him. <laughs> this one is just stand away from, I'm, I can't, I'm not saving him. I'm just not. I'm not even going to res him. Like, it's not worth it. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to exercise that kind of thing, but it's actually a waste of my MP to heal someone who's at 10 stacks like that when I could just keep the, uh... I could just keep this person alive and we'll be way better off. So now you can see how much damage you take when you have 10 stacks, by the way. 
Now, I'm going to get to see a mechanic. I haven't seen this next mechanic in ages. There's one more mechanic that I literally haven't seen, and it's the lilies of the lily of the saint. You have to kill these things before they finish casting decay, or it's really bad. You also got to avoid getting hit by this attack by the boss, the one where you have to look away. If you don't kill them before they finish casting decay, it's really, really bad. So you definitely don't want that. Oh, he's going to... Nah, he's fine. And then Soul Vacuum. I know we're all standing in front of the boss. <laughs> Generally not the strategy you go for, but you know what? I'll, uh, I'll take it. Oh, great. Cleric. 10 out of 10 Cleric, boys. I was like... I honestly wasn't interested in resing the tank there. I was not interested in that at all. And they just typed in the chat, by the way. They said, get the boss! Get the boss! Didn't ask for a res. Did nothing. I'm, uh... I don't know which one of you two I want to give it to. I'm going to give it to you. Nah, I'm going to give it to the monk. That was tough. As you can see. So don't stand in any of the AoEs and kill the ads. I am going to exit this dungeon now. And, uh... <laughs> both of the DPS just hugged me. And greeted her like, thank you. Why would you... He just... I got all three commendations. <laughs> he asked for a res. Dude, just return to the entrance. No, I'm not. I'm sorry, but like... That was really, like, there are times when resing the tank is not a good use of MP. That is one of those times. It was, uh, that was a rough one, man. If you are that Dark Knight and you end up watching this video, or if you're a Dark Knight who watched that video, please take the things I said to heart, um, because it definitely makes the dungeon run a lot more difficult. If you don't know what you're doing also, Please tell the group that you're, you, you just came back to the game and you're checking out Dark Knight and you're not really sure what you're doing. Communicate that you, you know, communicate your situation to everybody else because it's going to make the rest of the dungeon, it's going to make your dungeon life, your Final Fantasy life way easier than when, you know, we are almost not sure whether or not we can actually say something to you and not just have it be something that explodes in the party chat, which honestly a lot of people get super defensive and really, really, you know, it's hard to work with them when it comes to these situations. So that was a really weird situation, kind of almost don't want to use the footage for the video, but I will anyway, uh, because it was at least a decent example of how to do the boss fights and how you can deal with that kind of as a healer in four-man dungeons. So I'm going to leave that in. Everybody, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to the Patreon supporters for bringing the series back. And be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys in the next video. So, well, I'll just see you then. We'll do the other 3.1 dungeon, Pharaoh series hard mode. And until then, take care.